Chief AJ is not only a world-renowned shooter, he teaches other people to shoot. Here he is in his rifle camp. He's even taught the Indianapolis Colts how to shoot as well. Hi, I'm Chief AJ. I will be your rifle instructor today. I've been doing this for 22 years. He already knew uh, instant shooting. When he kicks that football that upright, there's no sights on that football. <laughs> that you is know, very true. You shoot a basketball or, or, you know, shoot a hoops from uh, downtown, they call it. That's a three-pointer. Yeah. There's no sights on that basketball. <laughs> so, so, so what I took. Go ahead. But I thought people on instinct shooting, it carries over to uh, all sports. And one thing about I'd like to say about marksmanship, and I know about teaching so many, it's a joy when you can hit the target. When you know that you've developed the skill and you can place a projectile on it, it's a really good feeling. Um, and that's why shooting sports are popular. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I remember when I um, when I first started shooting myself, the first couple of times I really wasn't too concerned. I wasn't too concerned with being a good marksman. I was still getting used to the feeling of the gun in my hand and, and shooting it. And then after a while, when I started shooting more, and you started to see your groupings getting a little bit better and better and better and tighter and tighter, um, I, I, it, it made the shooting process really, really enjoyable. And so. Um, how often do you find yourself teaching people who, who, who have never shot a gun ever before? Are you usually dealing with people who have shot, who have a history with shooting, or are you generally teaching a lot of first-time shooters? Well, I preferred to get a person who had never shot before. Why is that? Uh, well, men would bring their girlfriends, and they, <laughs> they, most of them never shot before, and they paid attention. Uh, they went through my drills. And they listened to what I taught them, and uh, in two hours, they were out shooting their boyfriends <laughs> <laughs> because they would pay attention. Yes. Uh, uh, they called me down to an Amish farm. Uh, are you familiar with Amish people? Yes, I am. Uh, they called me to an Amish farm, and they brought in all the children, the aunts and the uncles, and I went through all my drills, and when it came to putting the clay bird in the air going away at 55 miles an hour, uh, this 10-year-old girl outshot them all because she'd paid attention and she'd listened. Awesome. And I've noticed she, that. Go ahead. Yeah, she wasn't old enough to realize that she weren't supposed to outshoot the men <laughs> <laughs> in that community. <laughs> oh, wow. You're right. <laughs> So how did how did that how did the, I mean I did, I got such a kick out of that she was just so good I just done gave her the the ten twenty two rifle yeah I sure did <laughs> so how how did the men feel about that when she when you taught her how to outshoot them well I'm sure that the other ladies took her aside and said you know the men are supposed to be dominant and everything but uh, at her age she hadn't learned that yet that was good <laughs> yeah. So she and I kind of bonded, and, and uh, the rest of them kind of wandered away, and, and uh, we were both shooting targets out there and having a, having a good time. So I really enjoyed teaching marksmanship, and you could just watch people that when it got down near the end of the day and they were really hitting the target and they got that skill, they understood that guns aren't just for mean, evil purposes, uh, but hitting the target is a joy. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, just just watching you shoot, um, you know, I'm blown away. I have a hard time hitting target. I have a hard time hitting flying disc with shotguns, much less shooting it, trying to hit flying disc with a rifle. And you do it continuously and consistently. Um, so it's it's amazing watching you shoot that over and over and over again. Now, I did want to ask, uh, and talking about point shooting, how do you practice something like that when when it's something that's more or less intuitive? Is it something like like, you know, like if I'm going to practice shooting with a sight picture, I know, OK, each time line it up, you know, um, get my, my front sight, line it up with the rear sight. And there's there's steps, there are processes. Um, is it the same thing with point shooting or is it just you just keep trying to intuitively shoot until it just clicks one day? I combine uh, quick point shooting 
with uh, the strict sight picture that my Marine Corps drill instructor uh, taught me. You know, he shaved my head so I would listen to him. <laughs> right. So uh, I teach, there's a sweet spot, whether with a bow and arrow or with, or with a gun. It's right here, your sweet spot. Go ahead and put your hand on your sweet spot right there. When you come up with a rifle or shotgun, you hit the same place each time. Uh-huh. And when uh-huh. you go through the drill and you do that a lot, then you have muscle memory. So and when you come up and you hit it, you've got a perfect sight picture all lined up for you. So I'm teaching people the secret of the quick point shooting is getting a sight picture like that. Gotcha. Right. And, and, and when you're sight shooting and when you're doing like some of these trick shots, what's going on in your mind? Is there, is there brain chatter or is your mind completely silent and you're just dialed in? Oh, well, it's just fun. So you're having fun and you see that I can hit it. Yeah, and you know you can hit it. And uh, after I had shot for five days and went through that brick wall and got past that paint, it was like my third eye opened. And gotcha. I could tell. Uh, I was shooting with a full headdress on, and the wind blew the feathers down in front of my face, and I still hit the block that was in the air. I knew where everything uh, was. And I explained uh-huh. this to a martial arts expert afterwards, and he said, Chief, I went to a Tibetan a monastery. I paid the monks to beat me with sticks and chant for three days to learn how to do that. And he said, you learned it by shooting. So I didn't realize what I'd had. I didn't have to be beaten with rods or chant. <laughs> now, at what point did you, did you realize in your life that you had a special skill and a talent? That, that a lot of people didn't have, where it just clicked and it was like, I'm, I'm special at doing this. Okay. Uh, it's not a pretty story. I was down in Birmingham, Alabama, and I had about 40 people uh, in front of me. And I was explaining the workings of a self-loading rifle, uh-huh. and they were all listening. And Bubba in the back row, you know, you've seen Bubba's great big guys, <laughs> and Bubba hollers out, Hey, Chief, what makes you think you know so much about rifles? And one of the people in the front row, they said, Bubba, shut up and let the Marine talk. <laughs> so after I talked, Bubba came up, puts his finger on my chest. He said, if I had a rifle fine-tuned as yours, I could outshoot you. So I think, Bubba? Give me your rifle and thirty-five dollars, uh-huh. and I'll fine-tune that like I was going to shoot it, and then send it back to you. And then it went from thirty-five to forty-five to sixty-five, and so I was getting sixty-five dollars to fine-tune a ten twenty-two with a trigger job and hand lap to bore and jewelry mm-hmm. action, and ten to twelve ten twenty-twos would come in on the U.S. Uh, P truck. I would find two notes and put them on the truck that afternoon and they're leaving town. I was making six hundred dollars a day by working hard doing gunsmith work. And then along came Janet Reno. Mm. <laughs> that ruined my income. I, I couldn't uh, uh, get mail order guns in to work on and send them back to their owners anymore. That's unfortunate. That's incredibly unfortunate. Um we're gonna take um, we're gonna take one last break and then we'll be back. Um, and, and talk with you about some of the more unorthodox style of shooting, like with your AJ. Um, well, some people would see it a sling, the slingshot, but it's not just a slingshot. So we'll take a five-minute break, and we'll be back.